Seeking the Wise Wise. With Aaron and Alexander discussing the just philosophy. Covering self-development, emotional processing, conscious relationships, and five levels of overall wellness. Welcome, everyone, to the Wise Wise. Alexander here with my co-host, Aaron Keith, and we're mixing it up a little bit with Alexander starting it out. Yeah, yeah, we keep it fresh. And today we're going to talk about a subject or a few subjects that just kind of got sparked in a conversation before we actually got into the recording studio today. And it's going to be around being defensive or being offended and why we go into almost an automatic reaction of defensiveness when we feel like somebody has offended us. And we're also, I think, going to go down the path of when we have offended someone else and many of us have the urge to uh, correct that or be seen in a different way. And just in general, how much energy that either being on the offense or the defense takes. And I think to set this conversation off right, I think a good way of setting it up in your mind is to look at it as energy and not as an act. Because I feel like we give words power and the term offended me is something that is being used a lot in our culture. And it feels like from an outsider, I mean, I do participate in this culture, but it it feels like from somebody observing culture that it's getting worse or it's becoming more commonplace. But I feel like if we look at it as just energy and we're going to get into reasons why energetically we may feel like we're being offended by something or we may feel like we need to be on the defense of something, it takes away the judgment of it, possibly. Mm -hmm. Yes. And As you were saying, our culture is so inundated right now with being offended. There's a lot of the media that polarizes certain issues to, you know, keep that anger that those different views fighting each other. And there needs to be a remembering that being offended is a choice like someone making you angry. And we use these terms like when you said this, you made me so angry, or I got so offended by what this person said on social media. And like you were saying, it's a level of giving your power away. It's exhausting energy rather than learning to see it and to communicate it as I experienced someone's opinion today. And unfortunately, I took that offensively. And I'm looking forward to dissecting that and getting back to a level of peace and acceptance. Because, again, the acceptance doesn't mean condoning or approving of. It just means accepting that someone has a different view than you do on a certain subject. And when we get called into this duality as our second pillar in the just philosophy is polarity versus duality, the duality world is when you want to overcome somebody's way of thinking and either force or get them to see your way and The polarity view is accepting that as soon as you have a certain view of a certain subject, there has to be one or more people on the other side that feels just as strongly in an opposite direction. And so, again, the accepting of that takes away a lot of the energy to defend, to correct to be heard and made sure that we're understood completely. And I think that the more we get into this, especially in the extended conversation, to see that there is such a power in acceptance, and that's what I'm really going to work to get across, that it's the opposite of giving your power away because you're standing full in your power of your view when you accept someone's exact opposite view. And so for someone who may have not heard us talk about this in a past podcast or somebody new tuning in, When you say that it's a choice to be offended or it's a choice to feel a certain emotion, anger, sadness, somebody might not understand that completely hearing it for the first time. And they may actually be offended. So so let's can we bring in a little more of the background of where that comes from? Yeah. So in my experience of developing the philosophy and working with managing these emotions, I had to see that there was no control or management of the external, how somebody's going to feel about something, or even more so, how they are going to represent and share that. 
I see so many people trying to correct people and say, oh, you shouldn't say it like that or you shouldn't feel that way. And again, in that type of confrontation, I've never really seen anybody change their mind. Now, they may appease the person in that situation because they may want to avoid conflict. But typically, when there are two opposing views, very rarely does one of those opposing views change. So when I realize that, if I take full responsibility of my emotions, which is another pillar of our five pillars, which is emotional accountability and responsibility, in that if I allow what somebody says or what somebody does to affect me in a negative emotional way, that is what I begin to see as giving your power away. I like to compare it very similar to sports teams and that You might happen to like the Pittsburgh Steelers and somebody else likes the Dallas Cowboys. And see, in sports and things like that, we give a certain amount of room for people to be fans of different teams. But see, the person that appreciates Pittsburgh more, they might can give stats. You know, they get in these arguments of who's the better team throughout history and all this kind of thing. And this could be very similar as the vaccine or whether it's conspiracy theories or whatever, to understand that opinions are just that. Everybody is going to have opinions. But if you get upset at someone having an opposite opinion of yours, in my view, in my experience, it means that you're not as clear as you need to be in your view. So if there's any need to be defensive, if there's any need to explain yourself beyond oh, my favorite football team is Pittsburgh Steelers, and somebody else says, well, my favorite team is Dallas Cowboys. Hey, high five. Why can't that be okay? And it's the same thing with any subject, that if you feel a certain way about the so-called vaccines and somebody else feels very different, see, I want to be compassionate and I want to hear their point of view. I'll even invite their point of view because I have seen and proven in my own experience that When you allow people to be received right off the bat, they are normally more willing to listen to your point of view. So in that bringing that back full circle, that if I'm busy living my life feeling like I'm a victim and I am subject to somebody else's emotional whim, that is leading down a a path of not standing in your authority. To where if you're working towards wanting to be solid, wanting to be grounded, want to be centered, is similar to a tree. Trees in a storm are flexible. And most of the time they bend. Sometimes they come unrooted. But that's the way that I look to be in this world is flexible but grounded. And to realize that if I need to get my point across emphatically, then I have some doubt somewhere in my mind around that subject. And see, sometimes it's training from our childhood. And if you're in just a controversial type of environment growing up or where the mom and dad or mom and siblings or dad and siblings are constantly arguing about stuff. So you can think that that's just the way that communication happens, but it doesn't have to be that way. And I think shifting this to the understanding of taking full responsibility for your emotions and working just in the beginning to get away from saying, so-and-so made me mad, or this made me sad. Instead, to share the experience and said, when I found out this news, I experienced sadness. But through that sadness, I was able to see this beauty and this lesson out of it. And that's what we're really looking for is what I call the 360-degree view, that we allow to see something for exactly the way that it is, Learn not to judge it, and then see how firmly you feel about the view that you're holding. And if you have this urge to correct, to get your point across, the more emphatic that that is, probably the more you truly doubt what you're speaking of. And this is just very common in our culture for people to get in discussions, disagreements, arguments, and even into fights over just differing opinions of a subject. Yeah, I think it's very important to look at it from another angle because our culture looks at somebody offending somebody else as hurting them or inflicting pain on somebody else, almost like they're doing it on purpose. And that person or group of people that 
find something offensive is the victim. And so it's important to state that when you find something or you claim to be offended by something, that you are taking on a victim role. And I would also bring in that you're also trying to control a situation because by claiming that you're offended by something, you're trying to control that person not doing that. So it is also a judgment. But I would point out by claiming to be offended by something, and like you brought up, you're actually giving up your power because you're allowing that person's words or opinion to essentially control you and to control your emotional state. And we would call that manipulation. And that's widely accepted in modern day psychology is this emotional manipulation. Mm -hmm. So we can see that if you are allowing yourself to be offended by somebody else, you are essentially inflicting emotional manipulation onto yourself, right? Yes, yes. You're allowing their intention because a lot of people that are offensive out there in the world, they feed off of this reaction. And so the best way to deal with a bully is not to participate and to, you know, see their forcefulness as to show them that, well, no matter how you say this or present it, it's not going to upset me because I'm so firm in like the way I see this. And how this happens from time to time in my life is in sessions with private clients, you know, I work with people of all different faiths and spiritual paths and I work with, even with so-called non-believers, and I've had people that will come in and say, hey, I want to go ahead and let you know that I don't believe in any God or any of this astrology stuff or any of that stuff. And see, I want to be completely comfortable and that person to see that I'm comfortable for them to say that because I am so rooted in my faith and my understanding of the tools that I utilize in my own life, such as astrology, of how useful that is that I'm able to accept that this person just hasn't been able to see the usefulness of it. And maybe they've tried, maybe they haven't. But the very first thing is to make people feel received. And normally what I see is when somebody feels received, it eases the tension that people are so used to getting rejected, getting defensive, that they go into the argument with such a strong statement that they're prepared for you know, an attack. And when you don't give that attack back, and it's very important that this is earnest to truly work toward that somebody else's opinion or way of seeing things does not have to affect your way of seeing things or your experience at all. But there's this sense of that everybody's the word police. And I've been guilty of this in the past. And that if something that is said that, you know, they don't agree with, then they feel it's a responsibility to point this out and correct, so to say. And unfortunately, this just very rarely works. And I find that sometimes that even if your opinion is invited in, if you don't feel like it can be received, then my question is, why give it? If it's just going to stimulate more resistance in that other person, and that might even up the ante for them to say something or to do something that's even more offensive. So this challenge mentality is what I really want to kind of put to rest and to see that when you take the time to check in, and yes, if you take something offensively and you can't get centered to see at least the potential or why that view has to exist, then again, the pillar of polarity just helps break that through that we do experience both polarity and duality in this world. And the difference in those is Duality carries resistance to what the other person is saying or doing. And the view of polarity is that you already know that that opposite view has to exist. So you're not surprised by this different view. And in that situation, when you do see it through polarity, you don't need to correct. And they have a different experience in that so-called confrontation. Because, again, most people are used to getting in a pushing match. And if you're confident in how you feel about the subject, you don't need to push back. And I would imagine that those out there who choose to find the offensive nature of many things on a daily basis, they're probably not happy or content in their lives. And on this podcast, talking about the just philosophy, we're all about finding contentment 
and it all being a choice. Like none of this is something that's naturally going to happen. And if we allow things to naturally unfold, we're going to go where the energy is. And in our culture, it's more in line with finding what's offensive so that you can feel like you have power over somebody else. But You know, in this podcast, we're giving you tools and techniques to have the option to choose to no longer live in that state of being. And so you can choose to be content. You can choose to be happy. You can choose to no longer allow somebody else to affect how you feel on a day to day basis. You talked about the people who intentionally try to offend people Mm -hmm. out there. And I think that's a good thing to bring up. And again, if we look at it energetically, there's a term that many people use. And they say, oh, he's just trying to get a rise out of you. Right. And so this person, you know, if you try to like visually look at it, this person is trying to provoke you to steal your energy, basically. They feed off that response. And so they're challenging you. And I understand being a very competitive person that that challenge is very hard to not engage with. But whenever, and, and this is something that you've said since the very start of, me knowing you and getting into this type of work is when you give that person the energy back, you justify their initial energy. And yes. But if you don't, then sometimes it leaves them looking at their own behavior because usually they don't know why they're doing the provoking. Like mm-hmm. it's their subconscious. It's their automatic. So when you look at the world from a neutral standpoint, just observe We're really just people bumping into each other, reenacting what we've been taught behaviorally on our subconscious, and we're just allowing everybody else to steal our power and to tell us how to react emotionally. And doing this work adds that layer of consciousness within yourself so you can pause and have a choice. Do I want to participate in that? Do I want to participate in being content today? It's all a choice. So that's really what we're getting down to when we are talking about this subject or really many other subjects is the choice to become a conscious person. Yes, because it gets back to the foundation of sound therapy or sound healing. It comes back to the vibe. So every time that you go into an angry thought or angry vibration, it depletes your energy field. So realizing that When I went through my healing process 15 years ago and after the loss of Sherry, that I had to see and realize that I did have these choices about the vibration that I want to carry around, which directs what we attract in, and that I had to start asking myself, is this person, this situation, this subject worth me shifting my vibration for what? To prove a point? to try to be right. So this directed me toward the saying that now is utilized very often in this work. Would you rather be right or would you rather be helpful? And when I let go of wanting to be right, that competitive energy that you're talking about, and many of us have the competitive energy, but the way that I like to twist the competition is no more external competition. The competition now is in me not allowing somebody to knock me off center. And that if I do get emotional by something that someone says or does, then I just lost that little battle. But I don't beat myself up for it. I go, okay, what did they say or what did they do that sent me over that edge? And I want to be more prepared for that, whatever said or whatever was done next time when it comes. And normally that's directly connected to acceptance. So I think we've primed this topic real well. And in the complete conversation, we are going to touch upon what do we do when we are finding ourselves finding things offensive and how to redirect that energy when that situation comes up. But then also what happens when somebody else is offended by something we do? How do we react to that? What are the steps to take when that happens? And then also when that happens, to choose not to get offended by them being offended. And I think that's a cycle that at least I've noticed within myself. And we'll get into just the overall usefulness of what being offended can help us work on and other ways to help step more into our power so we can choose to live a more fulfilling life for ourselves. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Let's get into it. Thank you for listening to this free version of the Wise Wise Podcast. 
To hear the complete conversation and go deeper into the application of the tools and techniques of the Just Philosophy, head on over to wisewisepodcast.com and become a premium member. You'll get to hear all of our complete conversations, including the complete episodes of our Inward Journey story series and our entire back catalog, and continue your self-development journey with us. What an excellent episode for a time in our reality when finding offense has become (laughs) almost like an American pastime. It's important for us to come back in ground and center and realize that we are actually giving our personal power away when we choose to be offended by something somebody does or says. And of course, even though we've learned something new possibly today after listening to this episode, we shouldn't go run and throw this in our friends or families or our acquaintances' faces and say, hey, you always are finding offense with stuff. You know, this is the way to live. We have to exemplify this and show it in our energy so the people around us can sense, wow, this person's different. I just said something that challenged them and they didn't yell back. When most of our society is in that energy of finding offense, of wanting to challenge, of wanting to battle, it is a difference maker to stand in your power, to feel comfortable in your view and not need to challenge others when they present a different view or do something that you could find offense with. So if you've been listening to our free episodes, you are missing out on the demystification of self-development work through our practical tools and techniques that we show you how to implement these strategies in your everyday life so that you can continue and consistently work on yourself to become a better person and take back your power so you cannot be manipulated by external forces. It's such a great feeling. I've been working on myself in this process for seven years and I used to really get triggered. I mean, I'm an airy sun sign, so you can imagine how much of that I would get triggered over over things people say or whenever a challenge presented itself, whenever somebody said something that I would deem ignorant, I would be right there to show them, you know, show them how wrong they were. But now I'm comfortable in my own skin. I know that if I'm needing to show that challenge, show that that energy of needing to rise up when something is said that I don't agree with, I know that that is just me being not clear fully in what I believe. Because when we are are fully planting our flag in what we know, then there's nothing that can actually challenge us. And that comes with, of course, acceptance, a lot of acceptance. And the second pillar, polarity versus duality, also plays a role. We talked about this pillar a lot in the complete conversation. And and we can get into what you guys all missed in the complete conversation. We talked about how being offended is a synonym of judgment and a non-acceptance of different views existing. We talked about how many times what we are offended about is a protecting of our family view or an identity that we hold or a group that we subscribe to. So this means like a lot of groupthink, and we can see this in even in identity politics. If somebody says something that our group as a whole should feel offended about, and we're a part of this group, then we feel necessary to to stand up for our loyalty to this group and say something and almost like erode our energy in taking offense to whatever it was when perhaps maybe we should take a, a registry of all of the groups and labels and different ideologies that we are subscribing to and actually check in with ourselves and see, is this serving me? Is this me? Because we take on so much that isn't us. It's good to find the root of where it all comes from and then consciously decide if we feel it's necessary to continue 
to uphold that belief. We also talked about how one way to work through our taking offense is to give what we want to receive. So if we want to be heard, then we should practice working on hearing people so that they would be more open to hearing us. And I'll ask you out there, are you wanting to be heard or are you wanting to just yell and say the same talking points about whatever subject it is? Like, what is our point on being offended? Is it to be heard? Is it to get our point across, our viewpoint? And if it is, then we're talking about communication. And if we want to communicate, then we should want to look at the way we're communicating and adjust our energy so that we set up the optimal energy for a conscious communication where both sides are being heard. We did also talk about how we tend to tear down opposing views versus building up our own view. And this is the same as very similar to the group thing that I was talking about where people attack other people who have different views rather than working on understanding and building their own view up. We talked about how utilizing the three R's can help with our practice of working on not being offended. And this is the main tool that we did talk about. We walked through a very thorough example regarding a situation within a romantic relationship where one person was being offended by something that somebody else was doing. And this actually was around eating unhealthy food. And it's an example that I've brought up in multiple episodes and I like it to be consistent, but it is something that's very practical. And I think many of you out there could place your own situations onto it to derive what you should do in this certain situation. But we did build upon this example uh, and we talked about how it would be to become the example, to exemplify what we want, and then even finding solutions, which could be working with them to recreate what they are seeking or going out of our way to make sure that they have food if it is a lack of food that is happening. And also with that would be gentle reminders. We talked about how to handle a situation when somebody finds something that you did offensive and how to handle this consciously if you feel like you didn't do it intentionally. And so we did get into how to handle that consciously, but then we also got into when we should be flexible and when we should stand in our power with whatever action that we took when somebody finds it offensive. And this was a really good discussion around this because we're not out here just saying be passive and roll over and allow whoever to say that you're offending them and then you just have to apologize and give them all the power. No, we're talking about taking your power, but then giving you the conscious choice to know when to be helpful in a situation or to know when to stand your ground and not need to defend or change what you ultimately did while also being completely respectful. And we did get into art and comedy within this discussion as well. We also talked about if you choose to be offended by people who don't see things the way that you do, There will never be a shortage of this and you will just find yourself living a life of frustration and anger probably and complete energy drainage. And we're here to discuss how to stay energetically well. And so we are offering the tools and techniques to do that. And then we get into how everything needs friction to grow. And if you want something to stop growing, like a mindset, like a perspective out there in the world, then you probably would not want to feed it friction because the more friction, the more you stand up against it, the more it's going to grow because the people on the other side are going to dig in their heels and, and there's no communication happening. There's no consciousness happening when this happens. So if we're talking about energy here and you really want a perspective to cease in growth, then we need to look at the energy and the defense that we are giving that certain situation. And then finally, we got into how 
asking someone to share their perspective in their own words, why they believe what they believe is a win-win for everyone. So if you are curious about anything that I just mentioned, you want to go above and beyond what we offer in the free conversation, you want to support us doing the work, we've been doing it for over five years. This is episode 135 of the Wise Wise podcast. And you are here because you are trying to find a better way of living your life. And what is the price tag on that? The information here in this Wise Wise podcast is invaluable. It can change your life and lead you to a life of contentment like it has for me. And I'm eternally grateful for that. Please consider supporting us by going to wisewisepodcast.com and clicking on the get complete button in the upper right hand corner. You are supporting us continually putting this podcast together and putting our energy and time into sharing information that can ultimately change your life, change your relationships with your family, friends, and your children, your parents. It's such a beautiful thing. And don't forget, at the end of the complete conversation, Alexander and I talk about what you can do for homework to jump right into working on this current topic of finding a fence. And then we wrap it all up with a quick sound journey through the chakras as we work from the crown chakra all the way down to the root chakra to help balance you out after listening to this mentally heavy conversation around the current topic. So really appreciate you all joining us for this free version of the Wise Wise Podcast. We will see you on the next one. Until then, let's journey. We honor your dedication to self-growth, overall wellness, and continuing to ask the Wise Wise. And remember... Gradual changes over long periods of time equals lasting results. Continue on your self-growth journey by visiting thejustphilosophy.com where you are able to connect personally by booking a private consultation with Alexander in person, by phone, or Zoom. Uncover your authentic self more easily with a human design or destiny card consultation. Here, you will gain information about your energetic makeup, personality, and your higher self, as well as navigating your way through your relationships. There are also multiple types of reports available for purchase that help you gain insight into your career, relationships, and opportunities for self-growth. The site also allows you to view a calendar of Alexander's live performances and class schedule, peruse other products such as shirts, CDs, and finally, the revolutionary VibroTune vibrational sound therapy tables. These contoured therapy tables allow you to bathe in a vibrational sonic bath of frequencies, bringing you into alignment on all levels. You will be feeling and hearing calming music synced through vibration and frequency. So again, you can grab all this goodness at thejustphilosophy.com, T-H-E-J-U-S-T, P-H-I-L-O-S-O-P-H-Y dot com. The Just Philosophy, as discussed in this podcast, has been developed by Alexander over the last 25 years in his personal studies, private practice, and professional environment. The information discussed is intended for educational purposes only and is not meant as a replacement for conventional medicine. Just remember, knowledge plus experience equals wisdom. Seek the wise. We want to thank you for working on you. Keep shining your light and refining your vibe.